Thanks for tuning in. We're Ace Comicals. I have with me my co-host Rahul Jani and Leon Everett. I'm Greg Driver. Let's get started. Hi guys, welcome to Ace Comicals episode 006. In the wake of Logan, the recent Marvel blockbuster, we have decided to read and discuss Old Man Logan, the story of our favourite anti-hero turned pacifist in a ruined earth ruled by villains. And today I am joined by Rahul Johnny and Leon Everett, as always, my two co-hosts. Good evening. Hello. Old Man Logan is an eight-issue storyline from the Wolverine ongoing series. Um, it came out in 2008 to 2009, sort of across the two years, started in June 08. Runs between Wolverine number 66 to 72 and ends with giant size Old Man Logan in September of 2009. Now, it debuted its own solo series after the 2015 Secret Wars storyline, but that's not the part we're talking about. We're just interested in the 2008 to 2009 section, the initial eight issues. So, Old Man Logan, guys. Initial impressions? <laughs> Yeah, so we got to this, uh, well, basically I got to this because um, because of the film coming out. I hadn't really heard of it, <laughs> like so many of these things that we review. I hadn't heard of it until you guys told me about it. So I picked it up, um, and yeah, it's interesting. Um, it reminds me a lot of other of Mark Miller's other works. It is very, very, very Mark Miller. Um, you can, yeah, it, it's, well, yeah, it's Mark Miller. So, uh, Leon... Um, a friend of mine who I used to work with um, whenever we'd talk about comics uh, he'd always come back to this um, saying that um, even though it's relatively recent um, it's it was his favourite comic book storyline and he would say this since I've known him in uh, 2013 so I, I think maybe early 2015 i finally got round to it after him bringing it up loads so that was my um first reading of it but um yeah recently with the run up to the uh logan film which from the trailers looked like it was going to be influenced at the very least by this storyline mm, yeah. um uh, got me in a mood to uh, re take another look at that um, story with um, slightly different eyes. Cool. Yeah, I mean, similar similar story with me. I've seen the trailers for Logan and I thought, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I kind of... I would have been willing to put money on the fact that it was somehow based on this book um, from looking at the trailers. And I, I, obviously I got the urge to reread it and go back through it. Um I, my initial sort of um, introduction to this was a, a guy that uh, I knew from school and college um, who used to sort of talk about it all the time. Must He must have been reading it as it first came out. Um, and it's sort of from that, fr from there, I, I knew about it, I knew of it, but I never really actually got, got uh, actually went in and read it until a couple of years later when it was collected. Um I've always been like a bit of a Wolverine fan anyway. Always had a soft spot for Wolverine, the character. We call him an anti-hero, but I don't think he's so much an anti-hero as he is more um, willing to do the things that the others won't for the greater good. So not so much an anti-hero, just a bit a bit more... Um, what's the word for it? Uh, I can use Dungeons and Dragons alignments. Uh, chaotic good? <laughs> I don't know. I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I use anti-hero for anybody who's meant to be like a a positive, like protagonist, like a hero type, but does some really fucked up shit. That's that. I mean, that's Wolverine, right? Anti-hero for me is more somebody who's a hero without intending to be a hero. So they're out for themselves, rather Which than is the Wolverine, right? Rather than trying to do <laughs> well, he is and he isn't because he does. You know when he he's, when he he's altruistic at the core of it. You know when he's like part of the X Men and everything. Yeah. He's doing things for the greater good. He's just got this berserker rage that makes him do terrible things. 
Yeah, I guess it depends which Wolverine story you're reading. Yeah. Because it, yeah, it depends on which part of his timeline you're in or which part of his history you're in. It, yeah, it depends. Yeah, obviously, because he's done some, some, you know, some shady shit. And and he's been around forever. Yeah, so he's exactly. gone through various stages. And isn't he? The, the best the, the the best thing about Wolverine is the fact that they can kind of do whatever they like with him because he's been around forever. So you don't know like how. Well, we've got a proper origin story for him now because we've got Wolverine Origins, which goes back to when Canada was first settled and everything else. But like mm. he you the before that people were like well you know for all we know this guy could have been around forever and there's like stories of him being like a frontiersman fur trapping and things like that like this is from way back this is from before the weapon x uh storyline and things like that is well i think it was no this would have been published after the weapon x storyline it was published after the weapon x storyline um but it's like it's before um they brought it before they did this origin tale for him and everything else. It's like, well, you, they kind of could do whatever they wanted with him. And there's the stuff from him for, through all different periods of time. And like other heroes where it, they get dated, you know, like when you, you got like stuff from the 1960s with a certain hero and because they can't age him because it changes his look too much in the comic book and everything. They have to like, you have to loop it back. Yeah. They have to loop it, it, it back a bit and modernize sort of it. Yeah. With Wolverine, you don't, you kind of don't have to because Wolverine's been around that long anyway. So mm. you can kind of get away with it a little bit with Wolverine. I, I feel, yeah. any, I feel anyway. So but, yeah. his, his healing factor and mm. semi immortality help with that. Exactly. Yeah. So I've, I mean, I've always been a bit of a Wolverine fan. I've always had, I've always had a, bit of a soft spot for Wolverine. I like, I like Wolverine stories. Um, so, so with this book, Greg. Yeah. Um, so when's this one set? Because that's one thing I was a little bit confused about. Because um, not really read many Wolverine stories. I kind of just read this in isolation. I get the. I assume in an alternate universe. It's um, an alternate. It, the... It's an alternate universe. Yeah, it's um, alternate universe designated as Earth dash eight oh seven one two eight, and it's essentially an isolated <laughs> what if. It's not. It's not a. Um, it, it was published as part of the main Wolverine, the, the main Wolverine comic line, as as we've discussed. It's published as the main the main Wolverine series, but it wasn't actually. You know, it, it's kind of it's just like a, a far in the future type thing, like a what if the supervillains won? Kind of, uh, yeah. What if they got organized, took over, and beat all the heroes into submission slash killed them all? And this is what we're left with. Mm. And mm. we've got a man who has been broken by this experience. So Wolverine is no longer Wolverine. Prefers to be known as Logan and has taken up farming and pacifism. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much yeah he's uh he's decided that you know whatever happened to him was so terrible it it, it made him sort of he just had no taste for violence anymore and it's just not the wolverine you know at all at the start of this book um yeah, because so, it sort of introduces him immediately as this broken man. We get like a flashback yeah, of him yeah. in his darkest moments. Yeah. And then it flashes forward into uh, his life, like establishing what his life is like now in this kind of broken future. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a stark contrast. It's not the Wolverine you expect. No. And he mentions that he hasn't, like he hasn't popped his claws in, what was it, 30 years, 50 years? Like 50, 50 years, years, yeah. Yeah, a very long time. So, it, And we, yeah. we're, never, we're not told, like, right off the bat what Why? it was that yeah. Yeah, caused him to take this vow of pacifism. And that's that's pretty intriguing right off the bat. So the, 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 the gist of the story is that he is now a farmer with a wife and kids, uh, living a peaceful life, um, you know, working the land and whatever else, um, struggling to make ends meet. Basically, he's not making a lot of money. He's not making enough to pay rent. The particular part of America that he lives in, after the supervillains took over, is controlled by Bruce Banner and his clan of green inbreds, uh, <laughs> for want of a better way of explaining it. Um, now, he owes rent money to the Banners, and they're you know they're they're, they're coming around to intimidate him and stuff. And he won't fight back because he's taken a vow of pacifism. So he just gets smushed. And then uh, an old friend turns up. And this old friend offers him an opportunity to make some money by going on a road trip across the US with a 
precious cargo and to, to make a delivery basically as like a courier um, and that's where the story really begins so that that's where it all kicks off because it's all to do with this road trip across the US and mm. it, it, it's kind of like what the landscape looks like now the supervillains have taken over and who owns what part and um, the kind the basically the trials they have to go through to get from A to B is the main bulk of the story yeah and it gives it it's a good excuse for the plot to explain like to give some world building as to what happened to yes this, this world in the last 50 years since we last saw him yeah because, as a broken man. because it's only a limited series it's a good way to get that all in and it, i think mm. it's a nice way of explaining it because rather than because some, sometimes you get these these stories this type of story where they'll do like a a four page thing at the start of the book where they say so this happened back in whenever 20xx and then after that happened these guys took over and then they'll have a map divided up and it will show you who owns what bit but in this it's quite organic in the way they introduce it as part of the tale yeah rather than having like a, a four page like bit of like like um prologue type thing um so yeah that's that's pretty much the main summary of the book it is just this this like the devil's road trip <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing and it's it's kind of mad maxi um in the way that it does it because it's you know it's deserts it's uh biker gangs barren it's, landscapes. yeah barren landscapes you know yeah, little, it's like a used future kind of thing little post-apocalyptic shanty towns that kind yeah. of thing so well it's post-apocalyptic but it's not like post-apocalyptic in a way where the like the land has been made barren it's more just that the state of things are really messed up because all the villains have taken over it's not like yeah. there was a nuclear explosion and it's ruined the earth no it, it's <laughs> it's kind of what happens if you give a load of warlords control of a country so you know if you imagine what happens now in the modern day you know when you see these like places that are under warlord control and it's all pretty feudal it's all pretty fear-based rule you know people people don't get what they need all the time and the land's not barren because there's been a nuke set off or anything like that the land is barren because it's just from neglect yeah from neglect and from from the way the country's being run basically Um, and you've got this kind of like sort of post-apocalyptic air about it feels very very Mad Max very like make makeshift kind of you know like the way people everything they have is is kind of like something that they've dug up and maintained or whatever and it's all it's all that kind it's all that kind of thing garages you know people yeah it had, yeah. It had a, has a really like wild west vibe to it as well it does, especially yeah. right at the start yeah, it, yeah. It, the, the start is very old west um and that that kind of gives way to the post-apocalypse later on so it starts off a bit old westy and then later on as you go through the book it kind of gives way to the mad maxi post-apocalypse type thing as other parts of it start being introduced and other thing other characters and so forth so it's it's a dark future, I guess is the picture we're trying to paint. It's like, yeah, this is the worst thing that could happen, is what they were going for, I think. So Rahul, what initial thoughts on, I guess, the writing and the artwork? What did you think? What was your... Uh... I mean, I, I was kind of... I, I had expectations for it, based just based on knowing that it was Mark Miller. I, I knew nothing else about it except Mark Miller and that the Logan film was meant to be sort of based off of this. So mm. I think... I had an impression of what it was going to be, which was hyper-violent and um, which was from the Mark Miller side and kind of filmic, I was expecting, because I, I, in my head I thought that it was going to be like a direct, like I thought the film was going to be a adaptation of this book, which um, I'm not going to go into too many details, but it's not. It's not a direct adaptation at all. Um, it's not a very filmic book either, which we can discuss in spoilers. Um, but I... Yeah, I, I'd say I enjoyed it. It was a fun ride. Um, but I I think I came in expecting it to be more of a graphic novel with like a complete arc, and I was a little bit unsatisfied with it overall. But it does have some really fun moments, and it's super fucking gory, which is always good. And it's what you kind of expect and want from a standalone Wolverine story. Yeah, it's got... It, it's it's um, it, it revels in the violence. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Which is typically yeah. Mark Miller, I think. Yeah. And it's not it's just for me it's just it's just fun it's blunt it's heavy it's imprecise it's not 
it's not supposed to get you thinking about anything particularly. <laughs> it's just supposed to be a wild ride. It's it's the same reason you'd sit down and watch a action, you know, like a a, a, a brain dead action film, I guess. Hmm. But it's not. Well, okay, look, yeah. uh, I, I'm not going to go into spoilers yet. We'll get to that later. But I think like it's super bleak, and like you guys know me, the the listeners might not. Um, I love bleak stuff. Like I like depressing stories. Depressing stories are my jam. But like all of Miller's other stuff, it feels like needlessly and gleefully cruel at times. Um, like having all this violence without much pathos, I guess. Mm. And it kind of reminds me of Kick-Ass that way, which is another one of Mark Miller's works. But A, I didn't really care about the characters in Kick-Ass, so I was kind of okay with him having having way more fun with the, the gore in that one. Whereas in this one, I don't think he's having quite as much fun with it, even if even if the action itself is fun to witness. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes makes because Kickass to me was just a bunch of teenagers being idiots and and getting what they deserve for it. Yeah, and it was ridiculous and over yeah. the top. Whereas this one is over the top, but it's not ridiculous. Like yeah. it's, it's it's trying to be quite grounded while also being yeah. really like hyper sensational violence. I mean, I liked I liked Kickass, but I think like 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 you're saying this. I think this is more grounded. In yeah. that sense, or it's trying to be. It's trying to be, yeah. Uh, yeah, Leon. Uh, yeah, Leon. How about you? Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. My feelings on it are quite um, quite mixed because, like I say, this was uh, recommended to me from uh, a friend who's really into his comics, and he said, "Oh, this is my favorite." So with that comes some um, expectation. Um, and I remember the, the first time I read it, I was like, um, okay, this is interesting, but it's um, it's a comic. Um, and I, I don't mean that in really a derogatory sense, <laughs> but it it is what it is type of thing. But um, yeah, what I've... Like coming to it uh, on this read and uh, a lot of the things about it are more apparent. Um, so, like, starting off with the positive, what I think it does really well is, like you were mentioning before, Greg, with the the natural world building. Yeah. And how it organically um, sets up this world as they drive across the nation... Mm. To um, uh, to to do what to do their mission um, as they go across uh, across these different territories, um, I think it's really um, really I don't know really visually interesting how one bit will be like a desert with uh, like creatures there, another will look like the uh, bastard child of Vegas and Detroit um, mm. and like uh, New York from Escape from New York um, where it's almost uh, Roman with uh, people set against each other battling. Um, but, but yeah, like the way it, the way it does that, I, I felt was good for bringing you into the world without massive, massive exposition dumps. And then that paired with uh, Steve McNiven's art, which I, I, I quite like. I love how um, how fine his lines are mm. and um, how open uh, the, the eyes are. And when I say that, I mean, you can see, you can read so much in each person's face uh, whether it be, I mean, for the most part in this, it's either some sort of uh, evil smirk or it's uh, just blind rage or it's um, like bloody terror. So mm-hmm. I, I think the way that's done is really cool. And all the characters do have their sort of individual look, which which I quite like. Um and I, like, like 
half and half. I like how it pulls stuff around because, I mean, the best thing about this, in my opinion, is the setup, how it is this uh, this sort of uh, nightmare what-if tale if the bad guys won. Um, and I think one of its strengths in it being brief and going across this um, this story in only a couple of issues is also one of its major weaknesses because it feels like it it feels like it's a comic that should be or was intended to be like sixty issues, but mm. we get eight issues. And the downside of that is it feels a lot of things and like character motivations and like it, a lot of it feels rushed almost. And they like it's this thing where they go to a different part of America, a uh, different zone, and we get to see a different city and a different environment when they go there. But so much time is. Uh, so much time is spent on things which don't really seem or don't really appear to be that important on the actual plot. And the plot itself is so, so thin, but then the characterizations are quite um, one dimensional and there's no real arc at all in the story. There's no real twists there's no real, um, I mean, yeah, there's no real sort of thing to sort of keep you hooked to the storyline. It's more sort of seeing these people in this in this world and particularly seeing Wolverine in this world. But, um, like, I mean, with my negatives with the plotting and how certain things appear and certain deus ex machinas... Um, I, I I wish the sort of gritty and savage nature of it had more meaning. And I don't mean that in a um, pretentious way, just in the case of, like, there doesn't really, there doesn't really feel any stakes. I mean, <laughs> e- even though, uh, like, sort of lives hang in the balance with this, it, it doesn't really feel... Uh, like I don't have any connection or any sort of ticking time bomb, despite there is like um, a time limit on this. It all feels just sort of meandery, mm. and I guess it is like a road trip. Um, yeah. But but the 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 meanders usually in a road trip movie, the meanders or road trip story, sorry, the meanders are interesting and they reveal more about the characters. But the meanders in this feel very superficial even one which which is one of the earlier ones which you'd think would have more um impact or staying power doesn't really doesn't really connect i mean like it just feels like there is a 60 issue full story in here and i've read the the highlight cut down version mm. and that a lot of the um the finer details and character building are um elided and like loud obviously at this point i don't want to go into any proper details but like not even that way far through the story we we get um a bit more information that's been held back from us and it doesn't really hit with the punch that it should, in my opinion. Um, but I mean, those those are the negative things, and I'll, I have more to say in spoilers. Um, overall, I would say it's it's worth a read, but it's just a little disappointing because it feels it, like it, it's, it's hard to hard to explain without going into full detail, but yeah. like. One of one of my um, one of my issues with is the Batman comic Hush is that in that comic it feels like Kevin Smith was like, oh, I'm in the Batman world, so I've got to try and introduce as many people as possible, and it didn't feel organic. And I feel like with all the 
references to and all the people who pop up. Uh, it it doesn't feel organic at all. It just mm-hmm. feels like okay, let's spend eight issues in this post-apocalyptic a world of no heroes, and that's kind of cool. But it just it doesn't land with any punch. And like looking back in context, which is which is hard to do. But like looking back in context, this is a comic which came out before all the movies started to come out, uh, like the MCU movies, and uh, it came out the same year as the the Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight, and it, it feels like a product of its time, and I mean that in the way that it, it felt like. Miller was telling, Miller was doing what Miller d- does, and that was telling a nihilistic, bleak story, and using cool characters to to have a have have fun in a world. But it doesn't really feel like it means anything. So, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with that. Um, Miller doing what Miller does is exactly like it, I almost wrote that word for word later on, which was something I was going to cover. In was the the, the, like the nihilism, yeah, <laughs> the nihilism, and also like he's he's a crowd pleaser, and it feels like it's just trying to please a crowd. But, like they're throwing, mm. they throw, they've picked up all these elements of Marvel and thrown it at the wall and seen what stick, like what sticks. And like going yeah. back to what Leon said, like you said that you wish there was more meaning, but not in a pretentious way. I think I wish I, w- I wish there was more meaning, but in a slightly more pretentious way. Like I wish it was a bit more. Or rather, I was hoping that it would be a bit more literary because mm. it was a one-off story. I thought there would be that sort of graphic novel yeah. arc, which I was disappointed to find there wasn't. Yeah. And like you, you talked about the meanderings of a road trip story. Yeah. Where in a good road trip story, these meanderings would inform the character or would would cause you to learn stuff about the character. But in this book, the only times we learn something new about the character that's being hidden is when yeah. the characters just say it out loud they finally decide oh now's the time for me to explain why i am the way i am yeah yeah. and so here's what it's not because of anything that's happening in the world or their place in it or what's you know i think that position in the trip they're in yeah i think um i I think you 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 hit the nail on the head with the nihilism whatever but I, i kind of like that it's 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 so simple it's so simple and so dumb that I can switch off while reading it, and I quite, like, well, I, mean, <laughs> I quite like, like that it's Greg, like that. Yeah, like tell us how you feel. How did you feel about it? I, I, I really enjoyed the book. I, I like it as a Wolverine story. I like it as as a a short, small mirror glimpse that leaves things to the imagination. I like, I like that I get to take a little look into that world, and that it's not fully explained, and that I can, you know, fill in blanks in my head, and and you know, maybe. Maybe I should read the the 2015 um, redux of it, kind of thing, after the Secret War stuff, because maybe because I'd probably enjoy that as well. But I quite, you know, I just I like this little small glimpse into this world where everything's gone wrong. It, for me, it, I, I like these what if tales. So I yeah. like that they. I mean, it might feel a little bit unresolved, I guess. Um, like you were saying, that it feels that it could have been more, but it wasn't. But I like that they. I like these little self-contained stories. Yeah, I like, I think, I like I think it that way, and I, I like I like that it's, you know, I, I I in this one I think because of be, it's Wolverine, so the nihilism and the it fits well with who Wolverine is because he's not a person that cares lightly, and he's not a, a character that he's. I mean, he'll do thing. He he'll do what he believes he should do for the greater good, and he carries weight with him. If you read, you know, you read other Wolverine stories, he carries the weight of his past on his back the whole time. Like everything that happens in every other Wolverine story always builds up to the point you're at. So wherever you're reading Wolverine, it always takes into account everything else. Usually, there's anomalies, but yeah, I th- I think that's fair enough. And like yeah. Leon said before. Um... Like it's it's a product of its time, yeah. Bef- because it came out before the films came out, where you're yeah. we've come to expect these characters to have like uh, an arc that closes an entire film. Whereas this is a comic book, and comic books like have to they serve their master in that you finish an issue and it's meant to hook you into the next one. Yeah, and it definitely feels that way. And like you said, like the the amount of stuff they've put in, it yeah. it tickles that part of you which enjoys the um 
like picking up on the references and seeing all the detail in the world. And yeah, yeah I, I th- there's loads of merit to mm. this. I'm not saying that it's not worth a read. I think I didn't I didn't say that earlier. I do think it's absolutely worth a read because of the amount of um, just the amount of fun it is to get through. Yeah, no, but I was just a little bit let down by the the overall I, nature of the story. For me, for me, yeah, I, say, I, oh. I definitely think it's um, a, a good read. And yeah, hmm. yeah some so of my issues with like the plotting and story i i do agree with you greg i do like um how it does paint in some broad strokes and leaves um some things up to the imagination yeah, yeah i like i like that it's it's so I, i'd recommend it as a good read and it's the kind of thing that i'd recommend to people that are probably aren't usually reading comics that are probably thinking of going to see logan i'd be like well read this first because it, it kind of sets sets you up in the kind of mindset of the movie a little bit. Hmm. Um, I'm I'm not sure I agree with that. <laughs> but shall we shall we go into spoilers so we don't keep talking? Can I can I just further? can I just do one thing first? Can I correct Leon? Because yeah. because Hush was <laughs> Jeff Loeb, not Kevin Smith. Was it Loeb? Yes. Loeb, okay. Loeb was Hush. <laughs> um, Smith was um, Cacophony. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Hush was. Well, Loeb should know better. <laughs> he should. <laughs> he should. But I'm. I'm not going to bag on Hush. I'm save. We we'll save Hush for another podcast. I like Hush. So, I like everything though. I'm really easily pleased. I'm... <laughs> but yeah, as is evident from the last couple of things we've talked about, I'm very easily pleased. But yeah, if you want to move that, into spoilers, that's, that's we... not a bad thing for a comic book fan. <laughs> should we yeah. move into spoilers? I think so. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna move into a spoilery conversation now for the Old Man Logan comic. So we're gonna start dipping into the actual sections of story and things like that. So if you're planning on reading it, you might want to stop listening now. Okay. Right. So. Um, yeah. So wait. First things first. Wait, because this is something that's been on my mind the entire time, and yeah. I wanted to. I've been dying to ask you guys. When the fuck did Bruce Banner become a bad guy? Like, what, what, what's up with that? Or is that? Is that canon from anything that's moved on forward, or is it just they decided to pick one random hero and make him a villain along with the rest of the villains? I'm. I was wondering oh, this as well. I'm not 100 percent sure. There's if, a throwaway line in there about the radiation message. Yeah, yeah, brain. that's what I was. Thinking, but he says yeah. that himself. Like he's he's talking about himself there. So he's cl- like, there's a part of him that's made a choice to just turn into a like a. a I don't know, whatever, whatever, whatever the word is for some guy who goes nuts and then starts making, like, mating with his own family to make <laughs> offspring. Yes, yeah, like this guy is like a professor, a genius guy. <laughs> like, why is he a hillbilly suddenly? I did find that All of us... kind of odd. I think, I think it might be like you said to do with the throwaway line about the radiation deteriorating his brain slightly or something. I don't know. But he's got enough self awareness to, to know that's what's going on. It, with it him. probably it's, it might have sent, really sent him a little screwball in his mm. you know as he as time went on maybe it deteriorated his brain to the point well, that he sort of developed a psychosis or something I don't know. Well, okay, so look, the premise of this story is that through various means all the villains have collaborate. I've finally decided to yeah. collaborate. I yeah. don't know how or like they'd never thought of this before. Yeah. I think um, what's his name Red. Red uh, Skull. Red Skull uh, alludes to it later on. But, like, so all of the heroes have been destroyed in some way except for a select few. So we've got Hawkeye, who is the, the guy who asks Wolverine to come on this journey. Sorry, Logan, to come on this journey with him. Um, we've got Logan left over, and we've got, like, Banner. Logan. So is there something about just being one of the leftovers that could possibly turn you into I think, a bad guy? I think, well, oh. here's how I see it. I think Logan's still alive because you can't kill him. Uh, and because right. and because he went off grid after he did what he did, um, and Hawkeye's still alive because the bad guys decided he didn't matter. Like he says later on in the book, yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, you know, I'm almost insulted that they didn't kill me. Why didn't they just kill me? But that's my point. Like, yeah, uh, Banner slash Hulk was like a huge yeah uh, hero. Like, he's, there's no way he's going to get well, overlooked in the way I, that Hawkeye was. So what what made it? Oh, do you think he's so powerful that nobody could kill him? So they just decided to leave him alone. Oh and... no, didn't he? He earned his area from Abomination. He, he killed Abomination and earned his area. Yeah, right. Okay. So he he basically beat Abomination because and and then took over. And because the the nature, of, I mean, I'm not sure what was going on in comics at the time, but I think the Hulk was a bit of a 
anti-hero at the time. I don't know mm. for sure. Right, Not okay. 100% on that. But also, for me, the reason... By, wait, wait, wait. By your definition of anti-hero, where it's a guy doing good <laughs> things? Like, what, what... No, I think, I think he was just like a, a, a force that was harnessed by the good guys, but then right. went a bit rogue or something right, right. like that. So he's, for me, he's... Um, the reason he's in this book the way it is is because the first appearance of Wolverine was in a Hulk comic where he fights the Hulk. So I think this whole thing ah. is like a build up to him going toe to toe again with the Hulk, basically, as like an homage to the, the first appearance of Wolverine, kind of like a, a snake eating its own tail full circle type deal. Oh, okay, so, that's kind of quiet. I yeah, never knew that. Because yeah. the first appearance of Wolverine was Incredible Hulk. The first full appearance was Incredible Hulk 181, where they duke it out, basically. Um, okay. Which was recently reprinted, actually. You know, in the... Um, the I think I, I talked about this on the previous podcast with Leon. I got those Wolverine comics, those True Believers ones. Oh, yeah, they're reprinting a bunch yeah, of other ones. Yeah, they reprinted a bunch yeah. of Wolverines. Um, and they okay. reprinted Hulk 180. Uh, 181, okay. even, sorry. Hulk Hulk 181 as part of that and that was the first appearance of Wolverine um, so I think it's kind of like a thing to do with that I think it's like that. yeah the first appearance of Wolverine so so the first thing he ever did was fight the Incredible Hulk let's have possibly if this is supposed to be set in the future and this is supposed to be one of several possible endings Wolverine could have let's have this as the last thing he possibly does kind of thing you know if that makes yeah, sense. That's, that's yeah. kind of cool. That yeah. makes that makes me enjoy it a little bit more, but on a meta sense, not yeah. on a yeah. internal sense. Yeah. And um, so, so that's that's my reasoning for having the banner in it. And I think maybe it like it's the the line in the book about the radiation sending him a bit screwball, and he decided that you know maybe he's got like delusions of grandeur because he thinks you know hold on I, I'm I'm the Incredible Hulk I've got gamma ray blood I'm. I turn into this big unstoppable force of nature. Why shouldn't I create my own master race type thing? Maybe a little bit. I don't know. So he decides to do the. He decides to breed with his cousin. Yeah, Yeah. as you know, and that kind of. Come on, he's a professor and she's a lawyer. Like that, none of this They're makes supposed any to be sense. smart I, people. Yeah, I don't understand how. Maybe they get maybe it spiraled with... on from there because I, I don't know. But it's just... <laughs> I mean, and who knows about continuity at the time? Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know, but but maybe that was just. I think it's an excuse to shoehorn him in, and I think the tone of the book with the Hulk people being like hillbillies and stuff, and the whole thing being this like dusty dirty road trip across america you know and it's 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 americana it's western it's i think i think that they had to have the trailer park in there i think that's a symptom of the time (laughs) as well i think 2008 um you've got like this whole this aesthetic you you get in in some two in some music videos from the time from around that sort of age i wouldn't say specifically in 2008 because i don't know but you get that kind of feeling from it you know that it's built Mm. it's built around that kind of aesthetic this this like um i think i think it's kind of you know what it is as well it's kind of like a thrash out at all the things that you maybe think are wrong with your country okay so i I didn't really explain a bit more so if you if you look at it and you look at maybe think about what was um you maybe think about like all the all the th- negative things you would associate with the US and i guess then, and it was it was starting to come out at the end of the bush administration yeah so if you if you think about all the things that you associate as negative with the united states um and you look at this book it kind of showcases all these little like dirty bits of the US basically that get sort of overlooked a little bit maybe or that aren't usually I, I don't know for me that's what it, it for me it's kind of it kind of does that it kind of showcases that side of America a little bit and I think that's what it's playing up to mm. like it, it's because in its in its nihilism it's like an it, it, it's like a, ni- a nihilistic view of the US this is what the US is it's a bunch of trailer trash strolling around extorting money off each other <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, I, I, I think if if that message is in there at all, I think it's less. This is what the US is, and and more. This is 
the, what happens when the worst takes over. Yeah, mm. yeah. But it, 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 it's got that kind of feeling about it, you know. Mm. But, but it has I've got... It... Sorry. No, I was just going to say, it's very Mark Miller in my head that way. Like, it's kind mm. of a juvenile nihilism. It's like, look how shit everything is. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's very... Well, thing, I've got two big things and then a bunch of other small things that I did want to bring up. Yeah. Mm. But uh, the one of the big things is the Logan reveal when we find out what he did. Why hasn't he popped his claws in 50 years? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I, I, I'm in two minds about this because I think the concept of it is cool in one bit where it's the case where uh, the, the berserker just let loose... Um, uh, killing his mates, uh, thinking that they're bad guys. Like the idea of it is cool, but I don't think the execution or logic of it is there because, like, it, it's kind of dull for it to be just Mysterio saying, "Yeah, it was just me. I tricked you into killing your friends." <laughs> when it's like, I know you can control like all the senses and stuff, but but then there's a big stretch to be like, "Oh, your mates uh, are going to hold back." It's like. Someone could have froze him. Someone could have put him to sleep. Like it's a, it's a bit, a, it's a, it goes a bit far. That it's like uh, Wolverine just jumped around the school, just well, you, murdering these you, guys you, super easily. You can only see the fever dream. You don't know what's actually happening. They might have been freezing him and putting him to sleep because he got those injuries from somewhere, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, I but, think we read that completely differently because I re- That's one of the few things I really did like about this is that. It was just Mysterio. Yeah. Like, it's this or this subpar Spidey villain comes up and, like, destroys the X-Men. I, I think was, that's awesome. I was going to say that because I love stuff like that. I, I've, read, I was read, I've read Batman Eternal, the Batman Eternal storyline. Um, and that, like, I don't want to spoil that too. Well, I guess I'm going to spoil it. But that turns out, <laughs> it's basically implied from the start of the book anyway. But it turns out that the bad guy is Clue Master. Like, the big bad, controlling everything. Like, getting all these other, like... Batman rogues gallery types to work for him is Clue Master, and Clue Master is like a second rate Riddler. So <laughs> he's like an ex game show host, and he's like a second rate Riddler, and he wanted revenge on Batman, and this whole thing was his like revenge plot. And he does like yeah, this big speech I, at the end, he's like, Yeah, well, what do you think now? Huh? Everyone underestimates Clue Master. Now look at me, got you on a See, cruise. I, I guess it, it's, it, it's a cool yeah. subversion. But I, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't. It ring. doesn't ring true, does it? Yeah, it do, yeah. it doesn't. Especially the way the reveal's done as well. It doesn't feel like the stab in your gut that it should be. And like, I do like sort of the last bit where it's like Jubilee in his arms. But yeah. one mm-hmm. thing, um, do you guys know the significance of when he's fighting? Um, uh, what's his name? The dead, the Daredevil villain. Is it? Bullseye? Uh, Bullseye, Bullseye, yeah. yeah. yeah well, he says he fought him for like 90 minutes. Who was that? That was... Mm. Um, I don't know who I'm that was. I'm not sure, was. yeah. Because it shows him holding Jubilee at the end. Yeah, but I didn't... like. I bet that like, was... How you did know what? she hold her own that against... That could have been right? Cyclops. I was thinking yeah. that from the look. Yeah. But mm. then they confused it by when the curtain is pulled up, he's holding Jubilee. So, yeah. so who who from the X Men do you think Leon could have gone toe to toe with Wolverine for an hour and a half? Physically, yeah, uh, <laughs> like Colossus or Colossus. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the size—I do you know, know what you mean. Like this, this is kind of the whole like picking up all the Marvel pieces and throwing them at the wall to see what sticks. Like it's just stuff happening, and like the reveal is kind of cool. I think the. The fact that we see it seeded at the very start of the comic, him walking to the train tracks, and then we see it again, and we see the train in him, that all worked really well for me. But it's all the stuff in between feels really random. <laughs> it's like a play on, a, you know, is, is it the film A Beautiful Life? A Wonderful Life or whatever, where, you know, where he's like going to kill himself with the train at the start, right. and then he gets shown all these things about why he shouldn't do it or something. Yeah, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful yeah. life, yeah. It's kind of like that, but not. It's but like the, the exact anti, opposite. It's an anti, it's a wonderful <laughs> life, because he actually throws himself in front of a train. Well, the, the thing is, like, I really do like the bit after where he just lays his head down in front of the train, and it's like, <laughs> like he knew it wouldn't kill him, but he knew it would hurt. Like, yeah, sometimes I, that's enough. Yeah, that's yeah, a great... Yeah, I, I thought I like that, that was one of the best and more uh, nuanced lines in the whole book that, because yeah. it, it captures this sort of 
pathos and self-loathing and in such Mm. a real relatable way yeah like i keep coming back to the book is a blunt object it's violent and it's imprecise and whatever else but that is the most wolverine thing that happens Mm. that i think that for me is the most wolverine thing about it when he says it hurts and sometimes that's enough that's a very wolverine thing to say yeah yeah it's self-loathing because he's yeah I, I, i do love the um sorry was your point I was going to talk about world building, so unless you want to move on to that. I was, yeah, okay, so... um, If you have something to say first. Well, yeah, I I was just going to mention, like, when you get close-ups of people's faces. um, I like the way they... Because to do with world building, I like the way they age people in this book. Yeah. So, so yeah, like, yeah. when when you look at, like, how, you know, like, the age, and you can actually see the age in people's faces when you get close-ups with, like, the fine detail on the wrinkles and stuff. and mm. Even down to the rust on the cars and the chunks missing out of the buildings and mm. just the whole way, it just looks like that. I, I you know, I just, I like that. And, but, yeah, and then, a lot of the heavy lifting is done by the art, yeah, definitely yeah. not by the writing. And, and if you were, were going to do something to... to um, to Hawkeye when you made him old you were going to make him blind <laughs> right <laughs> come on <laughs> uh, again that's part of the like the, the, again it seems so Mark Miller to me where it's like wouldn't it be cool if the guy who's got great eyesight is blind like it's <laughs> I, I, mm, there's a little bit of it that I just find a little bit See, too I, juvenile I like that like, I like it I like that it's like that I mean it is a bit juvenile maybe but I don't hate it it's yeah. just you know it's a little bit cliched to me like I, what I was going to say some of the some of the world building felt really cheap or at least like if not cheap then really throw away so like yeah. Leon mentioned the um, the Colosseum style gladiatorial combat thing so there's a scene where Daredevil and the Punisher are just being um, are being brought in in chains to like what we assume is going to be like gladiatorial combat but then they get set upon by raptors and eviscerated immediately yeah. It's like it's cool that they've decided to pick um, to take reference of Daredevil and Punisher, but like, why have they been hanging around for fifty years as prisoners? They're not. Yeah. They're not. The and actual... then suddenly in this moment, yeah. well, no, but suddenly in this moment when they're driving past the yeah. Coliseum, not even looking into it, just we as the audience are looking past it, and they're like, "Hey, this would be a cool moment to kill two of our favorite heroes with dinosaurs." Like it just. Hmm. They're not There's actually. About that. They're not actually the Daredevil and the Punisher. They're kids pretending to be. They, they, it's, oh. it's, it's part... They've gone there to get um, Hawkeye's daughter because they mention, like, where is blah, blah, don't they? No, actually, they're all part of the same gang and they've all gone there to supposedly get rid of the Kingpin Wait. because they're trying to be heroes. So, no, if, yeah. What, where, where, where does it say that? It's all mentioned. They're all, they're all part... Because they ask her what... They, they're asking, what did you do with, with what's Ashley? Name? Yeah, Ashley. And and uh, Kingpin replies to them, "What what your skinny friend? I'm thinking of something nasty or something like that. I've not thought of something nasty enough, or I'm still thinking of something nasty enough. But, I don't know. But he's like he's basically the, these three. This is what that is mentioned by um, Hawkeye's ex wife and Ultron as well. I love that Ultron's like this like fucking husband in chinos <laughs> and a polo shirt. <laughs> it's brilliant. But yeah, like the the, the um the, the <laughs> Ultron." But yeah, they um, it's mentioned by her that she's got it in her head about being a superhero or something, and then she's gone off with a couple yeah. of her friends. They formed a gang and went off to try and take out the kingpin. And this so is so he's just dressed them up. So either they've stolen the, the Punishers and the Daredevil's outfits and put it on the same way that she's wearing Spidey's outfit. Well, they won't have and... the actual Punisher and Daredevil outfits because they'll the, those are in the Red Skull's trophy room, I would imagine. But right, I think right. I think what you, you meant you you notice about Hammer Falls, yeah, yeah. I, you can buy like superhero merch and stuff like that, and it, it's oh, kind it's kind of like it, the way I look at Hammer Falls as well. Like you know, especially the way it's drawn. You know, in that panel when it shows you, mm-hmm. and there's that fat balding dude wearing a superhero costume, <laughs> and then you've got the other the other like chubby looking guy in the black t shirt with the long hair sitting at the little table with the Spider Man gear. Yeah, so it's, it's a post apocalyptic convention. It is, isn't it? It's... I was going to say, that's one of my favourite scenes, is that... And it, I was reread read again, it's only like three pages. Yeah. But like the, the Las Vegas um, thing where there's like yeah. a shrine... Um, it's almost like a superhero mecca. Yeah. Where you've got the, the unmovable Mol- M- Molinier? Mjolnir. Oh, God, how do you... 
Mjolnir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thor's <laughs> hammer. Like, no, no, no. Thor's hammer is just lying there on the ground, um, like unable to be moved, and it's become yeah. a shrine for these people. Yeah. I think that's a really cool moment. Like, yeah. that's yeah. the kind of thing I really like. It's where, it's where they go to pray for the return of the superheroes. I love that line yeah. as well when they're talking about, and it's like, you know, people come to pray that they'll return in a new costume, just like the old days. I'll read the actual mm. line, actually. It's like, this is where they come to pray that the superheroes come back, you know, like the old days when they just mm. rise from the dead with some cool new costume. Yeah. And it it, it, it is it, they're basically making a, just like a stab or a jibe at like retcons and things like that, you know, and yeah. they bring people yeah, back to life. Yeah. And I guess, no, I'll save that because we're not going to talk about that part yet. So I'll save that. I'm not going to talk about <laughs> that thing yet. Okay. So, um, but um, you've got the, um, yeah, it, it, it Hammer Falls for me. It, it's like the, the, the merch room at a convention on a Sunday morning. Mm. It's, it's got that kind of feeling about it. Everyone's like hung over and walking around a little bit zombied. It's post-apocalyptic. People that have been wearing the same costume all weekend, that costume is now falling apart. People have still got paint on from yesterday. <laughs> you know, and it's just, yeah. For me, it's that, yeah, it's that kind of like, feeling. Like, related to this, that this whole... This is the, the meander for me, which could have had a lot of cool story stuff in there. And it just hmm. feels like a waste of time or a way yeah. for us to see what X, Y, Z are doing. Because really, like, and it just feels like twist and twist and twist. It's like, okay, so let's go and rescue her. Oh, she doesn't need rescuing because she wants to be evil and blah, blah. And hmm. you just drive out of there and leave them behind. And, and then like, they're gone. Yeah. What was the point w- of that? Wouldn't you but- just drive away if someone wanted to take your head off with a shotgun? But- <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what is the point of that? Like, what's the point of the whole? What What is the point of putting that in the story? It's, it's, if it's not adding anything, what's yeah? If it's, it's not adding anything to, to any of the characters besides the characters, they're just going to immediately throw away. I again, guess what's the point? it's to bust your perception of superheroes. It's, this whole thing mm-hmm. kind of feels like a punch to the gut of like, you know, like the basically the, the she the whole thing is like there's hope there because he's thinking, oh yeah, she's going to be a superhero and whatever. It's more nihilism basically. That she's but fallen in line. Like, yeah, she's fallen in line with the rest of the world. She didn't go there to become a superhero. She went there to become the next big bad to take over, because it's like survival of the fittest, survival of the strongest. So she'll go there, kill him, and then she's in charge. Whoever kills who is in charge, basically. Oh, I mean, for every moment like this, there's a moment of a guy standing on, like, hugging the the cross on a church steeple. Which is another nice moment that I really liked. Like, there's a sunken city, and there's a guy just clinging to this this cross, and they just drive past it again. And so, like, there's moments you can drive past which just add to the world. Mm-hmm. Like, for every moment like that, there's a, a character like Ashley who has a twist and turn for no reason, or there's um, Venom on a T Rex, which then gets blown away. Yeah, like, three panels later. I think like, it, what is... it's it's because of I think it's like, um, well, Venom on a T Rex is. <laughs> <laughs> that's just awesome that's what that is i will have not have a bad it, word said about venom on a t-rex it's it's awesome <laughs> in in the panel but then when you get past it was it doesn't add anything it's like peril it's, cool. it's peril man yeah but it's fake manufactured peril but like that leads to my least favorite element of the whole thing and that's um emma frost ex machina <laughs> like <laughs> what's the up whole your car point and... of that part like I, she doesn't hmm. even we get a little comments that she sold out some mutants or something I it's, but... guess it's a way it's like a way of explaining what happened to mutants like why have they no, why has nobody got superpowers anymore because there's no mutants being born the only thing that i can think of as being like genuine uh plot not, not necessarily plot advancement but character development through Emma Frost is her asking Logan, have you finally found contentment? And he says, you're the mind reader. And she, she says, congratulations, which kind of like, that's the only thing of like actual substance I get from that whole scene, because at least we know then that Logan was actually yeah. happy with his family back there that he's left behind to try and protect. Yeah. Like, it's is, not, I don't even I, think, I, it, I don't know. Oh, sorry, carry on. I just think you could do that more elegantly oh i'm not defending it i'm just saying i think i think that it's it's oh you know because we talked about like getting this snapshot of the world i think Mm. i think all of this builds towards giving you a snapshot of what that world is now like with showing you what people are doing and how you know like different 
how diff who's because you, you you when you see a book when you read a story like this you always wonder like um who's still alive and who is still fighting the good fight and what became of this guy and what became of that guy and for me it's just kind of a little bit of that mm. and it just explains I... that and i like that it's in there because of that because it helps me build a picture of this world it's like okay so emma frost came out all right but she only came out all right because of you know xyz and um she's also going to explain that well because you might be thinking in your head well surely there's still mutants surely there's still kids being born with the ability to control fire and stuff why is there not a new super team yet trying to take the earth well trying to make america great again oops trying to you know (laughs) trying to help but there's you know it's just like um it's explained by emma frost in the way she says there's no more mutants being born anymore she's like there's not been a mutant born for x amount of years that's how it is now logan with but again, that's it's all so throwaway. Like it's it's leaving so much to the reader to fill in, which is is a is a valid storytelling method. But I I don't know. I just don't think it's. I personally don't feel like it's enough. Like it depends yeah. on what you're expecting or what you want from a story like this. And you say that you want these moments of um, like fill in the gaps, so it shows you what the state of things are. Yeah. But I kind of want what I was hoping for coming into this was more about Logan, more about Wolverine. And I don't think he has much happening for him, except for the fact that he goes to, he leaves his family to try and protect them. He suffers through a bunch of crap where he doesn't even really participate because he can't because of his vow of pacifism, reaches the end, destroys a villain, rushes home only to find that his entire family has been killed. And then it's an excuse, like a contrived excuse for him to pop his clothes. Well, I think, I think that's, I think that's the point. He pushes down the rage and the anger, the urge to be violent, the urge to do these things. He keeps it down the whole time because there's things there that would have pushed him over the edge. Like non-pacifist Wolverine wouldn't have thought twice about like gutting some moloids or something, you know. (laughs) <laughs> right and i get that if there's anything that's going to be a final straw for you to destroy that vow of pacifism it's you know, it's like the like whole it's like the whole like thing was for but... nothing it's like he's, he's got both of them exactly happened. the whole thing yeah. was for nothing like i two mm. two old men in a beat up world that you know they have helped save countless times that this time they couldn't mm. and one of them has a last hope because of the thing that he's you know Hawkeye has been sold some dream story of them bringing back the Avengers, bring, making another super team with super soldier serum. And it also mentions that it's actually a potent myth for people in America mm-hmm. that Captain America will come back from the dead and save them. So maybe maybe Hawkeye buys into that because he's got the super soldier serum and he's thinking, well, you know, we can do this. We can take down Red Skull. That's what I want to do. And he's got hope because of that. And, you know, it, you could see the hope displayed when he thought that his daughter was being a superhero when she wasn't and she actually turned on him and was a villain and but that didn't shake him at all it just it took until he got to the end of the journey and then he was killed at the end and and then wolverine's hope is i'm doing this for my family if i get the money i can pay the banners everything's going to be all right i don't care what happens and he's got this vow of pacifism because he wants to protect his family because he thinks that i guess i guess he's put it together that he thinks that if he gets his claws out He's just going to cause more trouble and he doesn't want that anymore. He just wants to be an ordinary man. And when he realizes it's all for nothing, when he finally, you know, he goes through all that pain, all that trouble, beats the Red Skull without using his claws, which is really awesome, by the way. He cuts his head off with Captain America's shield. I like that. (laughs) And I like, I like, I can imagine the Red Skull, I I don't. I can imagine the Red Skull's like listening to Wagner or something while he's like staring at all his trophies. <laughs> I like if I imagined it as a film scene or something, he would have Wagner on in the background staring at his trophies, probably humming along to it. And like, he'd be wearing the Captain America's like mask and everything. He's like, you know, the ancients used to wear the skin of their enemies and whatever, and, you know, <laughs> which I quite like that actually. As a bad guy, it's kind of like a, a really kind of crazy sick in the head thing for a bad guy to do and i quite quite like that i quite like that he's that sort of deranged and disheveled and yeah. i like that but then um wolverine steals the iron man armor and in a in, in last ditch attempt to get back and when he gets back he realizes it's all for nothing he's tired he's 
you know, he's been through all that trouble and then the banners went and did that anyway and that just pushed him over the edge and that that was the whole point of the story. It was all for nothing and it, it this is why it... It's... It, it, well, it's nihilism, like we said. It's just all, you know... <laughs> it's just, it is just textbook nihilism. But I, I think I would have loved this when I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> is, is the kind of nihilism that, that I yeah, think that, it is. Yeah, that's the thing. It feels like... When I said a product of its time... Hmm. Like... 2008 isn't that long ago. This feels like it's a 90s comic. Like, yeah. It doesn't feel yeah. as evolved. But even then, I say that. Yeah. And uh, comics in the late 80s felt more c- complete in their ideas. Oh, some of them, uh, and some more of them do, yeah. confident mm. in their execution. Mm. I mean, I, if you go back in time, um, this compared to other Wolverine tales, compared to classic Wolverine tales, things like... Um, his little jaunt in Japan, for example, um, when he goes, I mean, like the the time he goes and not not the there's two when he goes to Japan, the, not the the one that was written in the nineties, the other one, um, and there's also the um, the the like the classic Weapon X story, which I've written something about on the blog and I really enjoyed, and there's various other Wolverine stories that feel a bit more sort of. They, 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 you know, from classic classic Wolverine stories that feel better than this, that feel a bit more resolved and a bit, you know, I guess it's because they've got more hope. Because even as as Wolverine is, there's still like an edge of hope to all of those tales. But with this, this is the whole thing about this is there's no hope, there's no coming back. It's just this is what it is. And and I guess the point of this whole story when he gets back and realises it's all for nothing, it's like, this is who you are, Wolverine. You will, you will be nothing else. You are the berserker. That's what you are. Embra- yeah, embrace but it. Then, <laughs> but then again, like, the way it ends, the way it yeah. ends is he basically adopts uh, Bruce Jr. And, Steals. Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> he, they're gonna have, like, I don't think it's, that clear cut as like well you're always the animal because he's taken this kid and he's going to raise him so Hmm. i think it's like chance too but that um is related to something which i think is so dumb in this book and it's meant to be this cool revelation but it's like how does bruce banner not like get it in the moment yet his (laughs) second cousin or whatever fully understands that wolverine's has a healing factor. Yeah, so why thinking. is he surprised by that? Yeah, I, I didn't get that either. It made no sense to me. Gamma like, Ray. he had to have his hick grandson or whatever explain to him, but he's got a healing factor, and then in that moment, he pops out of his back. Gamma rays <laughs> melt brain cells, man. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I guess... Yeah, I, I quite like that ending, actually. I like that he fights the Hulk. I like that the Hulk eats him, and I like that he cuts his way out of the Hulk. I like that those is, panels. That is... Hulk has a pretty sick line where he's like, people piss themselves when I'm angry. <laughs> like, that's brilliant. <laughs> like, this is what I mean. It's dumb, stupid, entertaining, fun. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to read it again because I've read it three times in yeah. pre- preparation for this and I'm done. It's a blunt object. <laughs> it's heavy and it's imprecise. And I like, I, I enjoyed it. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, like uh, when you're a kid and you're watching something you shouldn't be watching, like if you get to see a violent film. <laughs> The yeah. kind of thing you'd love. <laughs> yeah, it does feel a little bit like that. Yeah. The kind of thing that gets passed around between, like, you know, when, when you're a kid and you like you're like lending each other like violent animes and stuff when you're like ten mm. at school, and like because some kids like, oh, I recorded this last night off the Sci-Fi Channel, and then brings it on a what? VHS tape. It's that kind of thing. It's like some kid would be like, look what my uncle bought me. <laughs> and well, speaking, there okay, speaking of that, it. Is, it, is it okay to briefly discuss the the film before we wrap up here? Because yeah, let's do what it, let's I, do the, it. the only thing that I want to say about this is yeah. all of the all of the things that I was hoping for, hope all of the things I was looking for in this book that didn't deliver is exactly what the film Logan delivers for me. Mm. All of that pathos, all of that like tight storytelling with uh, character development, that's exactly what Logan delivered. Yeah, so it's... if Scott, if you come out of this book feeling yeah. a little bit let down, you will enjoy the film. Yeah, I, think. I, I don't think you'll be let down by this book. I think you'll enjoy it, and I think <laughs> I think you'll enjoy the film as well because the film, the film has has like the the, the Claremont air to it, doesn't it, Leon? It's got like the whole like Claremont Wolverine 
Yeah, it's more Claremont yeah. than Miller for sure. Yeah. And to echo you guys' statements, um, what what I think that Logan does um, in comparison to this is that it picks up a lot of ideas and uh, sort of themes, but it it adds so much character. There's there's so much character in the film. Mm. I think that it's a better version of the story. Like, not as fantastical. Yeah. Not as um, not as fan servicey. Um, mm. But I think it's a, a more layered um, and enriching yeah. uh, experience than the book. I'd say I'd say that if Claremont wrote Old Man Logan, you'd get the Logan film. I think, am I? Am I? You, you guys agree with me on that, or? I, I have to admit, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I do know that. What do you? What do you like, think? I, I think, yeah. You're you. You agree with me on that, Leon? So repeat the statement. If uh, if Claremont wrote Old Man Logan, you'd get the Logan movie. Um, in ways, in ways. Yeah, I'd say you you get closer to it than you yeah. than you do. Yeah. I don't know maybe. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's it's got more, it, yeah, but like the the difference between this and the movie, like you say, this is this is like early. This is obviously it was written in two thousand eight, but if you said it feels like a nineties comic, I think it feels like an early O's comic, like two thousand two thousand one, um, and um, but it, the movie itself has got like an air of sort of eighties, late eighties, early nineties comics about it, which is quite nice, I think. But eighties, eighties comics got an air of eighties Marvel, eighties Wolverine about it. Um, and what I was going to mention, actually, which I mean, are we doing spoilers for the film? Yeah. Uh, do we have time for that right now? Um, I, it's it's, just, it's something it that I was going to mention before that I stopped myself from mentioning. Okay. What? Well, it's a it, it's a little thing. I guess it, it kind of is a tiny little spoiler, but in the film, they keep going back and looking at X-Men comics. X-Men comics pop up in the film. And it's just the line in this about superheroes coming back to life, and it doesn't actually happen like that, is to do with... It goes back to them looking at the comics and saying, this isn't real life in the movie, I guess, a little bit. That's that's what I was going to draw into. Hmm. But I didn't mention it before, because A, we weren't talking about the movie, and B... I don't know if we're avoiding spoilers or not, but I, I guess I guess we can wrap up now. We're we going to wrap up. Yeah, I have nothing more to add to this. Yeah, Leon, any more to add? No, I've said my piece. Yeah. Okay. So um, overall, I enjoyed it. I'd recommend it. I think if you're going to watch the movie, I'd say read it as well. I, I mean, obviously, they're not directly linked at all, as we've mentioned. They don't. One isn't entirely based on the other, and vice versa. But I think if you read this book and then it. it, it you you know or if you yeah if you're gonna watch the film read this anyway because it's not it's not gonna help you understand the film or anything like that it's just I think it's a cool way to get into kind of like the mindset and the world and whatever and um so yeah um that has been our review of Old Man Logan um you can find us on www.acecomicals.com you can find us at on uh, acecomicals.wordpress.com you can find us at facebook um, slash acecomicals you can find us on twitter at acecomicals you can find us on itunes and pocket casts if you just search for acecomicals we're there uh, you can also uh, get in contact with us via the acecomicals email uh, account which is uh, acecomicals at gmail.com uh, if you have any any questions you want to ask, uh, if you feel us some questions, we'll feature them in the um, uh, the the other episodes that we do where we have like a general chat about comics. That's where we'll feature the questions. So if you if you ask us any questions, we'll answer them. Um, you can get in touch with us directly as well. You can get in touch with me directly um, at Bato on Twitter. Um, guys, uh, Rahul, where can we get in touch with you? Yeah, on Twitter at at Monkey. So that's M O O N K E H. And Leon. At Leon Everett on Twitter. Yeah, and um, if you want to get in touch with uh, any of those two guys as well, you can drop an email to the Ace Comicals account and we can do it that way. Uh, or you can get in touch with them through the Ace Comicals channels if you ask a question specifically directed at one of those two. I'm sure they'll answer it. And uh, yeah, so that has been Ace Comicals. Uh, thanks for listening. Ace Comicals over and out.